Hi everyone, in this video we'll be discussing the problem print matrix in diagonal form and this particular problem has been asked previously in Amazon. So let us quickly discuss this particular problem and see what the problem statement says and then we'll try to see how we can implement this problem. So in this case you will be given a matrix. Let's say we have been given the matrix as 1, 2, 3, then we have been given 4, 5, 6 and then after that we have been given 7, 8, 9. So what we have to do is we have to print the matrix in the diagonal format. Now when we are thinking about the diagonal format, so the diagonal format is not uh, always specific. Every time it is changing its direction. So if you will see here, what is happening in this case is that firstly we are printing the diagonal in the upward direction, then in the downward direction, then in the upward direction, then in the downward direction and then in the upward direction. So basically the elements will be printed like 1, then we'll have 2, then we'll have 4, then we'll have 7, 5, 3, then after that we'll have 6, 8 and then 9. So let me check 1, 2, 4, 7, 5, 3, 1, 2, 4, 7, 5, 3, then we have 6, 8 and then we have 9. So you can see here that one time we are printing in the upper direction, then downwards direction, then again in the upward direction, then again in the downward direction. So we have to keep a pointer, like we can keep uh, one variable that is uh, that can be named as up. If it is 1, then we'll go in the upward direction. If it is uh, 0, then we'll go in the downward direction. So if, if the up is 1, you can directly go in the upward direction. If the up is uh, 0, then you can go in the downward direction. That is one thing that is very clear. Now when it comes to this problem, so from which element are you going to start? Or from which index are you going to start? So always you can understand that we are always going to start from here. So we are going to start our i from 0 and our j from 0. Now we can also keep a track of the number of elements that have been printed so far by keeping the count as 0. Okay. And at the end whenever the count will be equal to n square, that is the total number of elements, that is when we can stop. Right. Now when we are going to start off, so you can see that whenever we are moving in the upward direction. Okay, whenever we are moving in the upward direction, so there are circumstances that we need to understand that when we need to stop moving in the upward direction. So we can, uh, we need to stop moving in the upward direction in these cases. What are the cases? So you can see like in the first case, uh, here we are stopping the movement. Then after that, we are stopping the movement in the upward direction here. And then we are stopping the movement in the upward direction here. So the cases are that if suppose that we are moving in the upward direction. So in this particular scenario, the thing is that if you are moving in the upward direction, so suppose that your i is equal to zero. Okay. If whenever you reach the topmost row, okay, then you will stop or whenever you reach the last column, then also you will stop, right? How? Suppose that if I'll uh, make a matrix like one, two, three, four, then I'll have five, six, seven, eight, then I'll have nine, 10, 11, 12. Then I'll have 13, 14, 15 and 16. If I have got these elements, then what will happen here is that you can see here that this will be the upper diagonal. Then after that, this will be the downward diagonal. Then this will be the upper diagonal. And then later on, this will also be the upper diagonal and this also. So you can see here the case uh, that I'm highlighting with uh, orange color here and then here, here, and here. These are the cells where uh, you stopped. So in this case, you can see that at this place, in this place where you stopped, your i value was zero, right? So then you stopped. And then after this, uh, whenever your j was equal to n minus one also, moving in the upward direction, then also we stopped. So whenever we are moving in the upward direction, we know what are our breakpoints, right? And since we are moving in the upward direction, you can see that since the uh, movement is like this. So suppose that you are at a particular i comma j cell. So since you are moving in the upward direction, so then what can you say? Since you're moving in the upward direction, so you can say that your i, like your row is going upwards, right? i is going upwards because you are moving towards the upper row. So that is why always you can say that i will be decreasing. And since you're moving in the right side, always because you're moving in the upward uh, diagonal towards the right side, so that is why always you are uh, going in the right direction uh, in terms of columns. So you will always do j plus one. Since i is going to decrease and j is going to increase, so you can say that i should be greater or equal to zero and j should be less than n. Okay, j should not exceed n and i should be greater equal to 0 because i is decreasing. Right, so I hope that this part is clear. Now coming to the other scenario that whenever you are moving in the downward direction, then what will happen? So suppose if you have 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, then 5, 6, 7, then 8, then you have got 9, 10, 11, 12, then you have got 13, 14, 15, 16 again. Now if you are talking about the downward diagonal, so what are the downward diagonals? This one. Then you will have this as the upper, then this as the downward diagonal, 
and then this one as the upper this one as the down one so you can see that what are the cases when we need to stop whenever the i value is becoming equal to n minus 1 then you are breaking then you are stopping your uh, downward uh, movement because you can see here at 13 and 15 respectively you will stop and whenever what happens is that you reach uh, your jth row as uh, zero okay then also you are stopping so these are the stopping conditions now since you are moving in the downward direction so suppose that you are at a cell i comma j so if you are moving downwards so you'll always do i plus plus and since you are moving in the leftward direction so the column will decrease so j minus minus so here in this case you will write that i is lesser than n and you will write j is greater than zero i hope that this part is also clear to everyone now we have discussed all the basics like how we have to iterate and everything now let's try and build our answer let's try and build our code and if there is any other thing that i need to explain so i'll explain that also so let's try and implement our code in terms of uh, c language so what we will do here is firstly i'll increase the font here okay then after this when we start solving this problem so firstly we need the number of uh, rows so what i can uh, say here is that will be nothing but a matrix do, mat dot size because if i will do mat dot size then i'll get the number of rows or the number of columns because the given grid is n cross n then after that i'll declare my i as zero and i'll declare my j as zero as well then i'll also declare my count or the number of elements as zero then after that i'll say that uh, the upward direction initially i'll go in the upward direction so my up will be marked as one okay now after this what we will do here is we'll say that while the count of the elements that i have printed if it is uh, less than n into n so then till that time we'll keep on iterating and also one more thing we need to declare a vector int answer which will be storing the diagonal traversal of this particular matrix in the given format where you are alternatively moving in the upward and the downward diagonal respectively okay then after this what you will do is you will say that if the up direction is one so if you want to move in the upward direction then you will say that you will have a while loop and if you are moving in the upward direction so as i had explained your i will be doing what i will be decreasing and j will be increasing so you will write i is greater equal to zero i should be greater equal to zero and j should be lesser than n this condition now after this if this condition is satisfied then what you need to do is you need to do what answer dot uh, push back mat of uh, ij so you'll push this particular element inside and then after this you will say that okay we have counted this particular element and now you need to check your stopping condition so the conditions were that suppose if you're moving in the upward direction so you might end up hitting what you might end up hitting j is equal to n minus 1 or you might end up hitting i is equal to 0 so that these cases we need to cater so if j is equal to n minus 1 then you will say that in that case you need to increase your uh, i because if j has uh, reached its limit then you will increase your i and then you will simply break away from this okay and uh, otherwise you can say that else if what happens is suppose my i is equal equal to zero so if by moving upwards my i reach the zeroth row then in that case we need to increment our j and then we need to break away because this upward uh, the current upward diagonal that i was traversing it has been completed now once this is done uh, so uh, like uh, if these if else are catered then the loop will stop otherwise what i need to do is as i said since we are moving in the upward direction so i will keep on decreasing and then j will keep on increasing because we are moving in the upward direction so i minus minus and rightward direction so that's nothing but j plus plus now once this has been done so after this loop is executed then what we need to do is we can do up zor is equal to one so after uh, we have traversed in the upward diagonal then we need to change our up to zero so what can we do here so we can use the concept of zor here how we can use the concept of zor here because suppose that if the up variable suppose is one if it is one so if you do one zor one then you'll get zero so if currently the direction were up was one so we were moving in the upward direction now after this you will mark uh, one with uh, one or one so it will be zero then after this my up will become zero so i'll now move in the downward diagonal direction okay downward uh, left diagonal now after this what will happen is uh, suppose that after that i have uh, moved in the uh, diagonal that is downward left side now after this is done then again we will do what up is equal to up zor with one so zero zor one will give me what it will give me one so after this uh, after the downward traversal has been done then we'll again do the upward traversal because the up becomes one after this so this is how i'll be changing this particular case and here you will see that i'll write an else case here for the downward part and since we are uh, moving in the downward direction so what i need to check i need to uh, say that the first thing is that i should be less than n the reason being because we are moving in the 
downward direction so in that case the i will keep on increasing and j will keep on decreasing so we need to write j is greater equal to zero once this is done then we'll say that we'll push back the current element that is mat of ij is what we are going to push and once it has been pushed then after that we'll count that yes one more element has been pushed and after this what you can do is uh, you need to check your breakpoint that when you should break the loop so suppose that if you're moving in the downward direction so as i had already explained that if suppose that i is equal to n minus one so if you reach the last row that is when we you were stopping so you will do j plus plus and then you will simply break away okay otherwise else if the case can be that suppose that your j can become equal to zero if your j becomes equal to zero that is another situation when you need to stop so you need to move to the next row you will do i plus plus and then you will break away from here okay otherwise uh, in other case you will say that you will do i plus plus and j minus minus because you will keep on moving in the downward direction downward left uh, direction and once this is done then you will change up zor is equal to one so that since you are moving in the downward direction so up uh, variable can become one and now you can start moving back again in the upward direction once the downward di direction diagonal has been traversed now once this is done uh, so we need to close this loop and then after that we simply need to return our answer list that is the diagonal pattern of the matrix in the required format so let's run compile this and check if it is working fine on the samples or not execution is taking a bit of time so yeah you can see here that it is working fine on the samples uh, for three cross three matrix let's run submit this code to check if it gets accepted or not and such kind of problems are regularly asked in companies like amazon so 10 cases uh, have passed and you can see all the test cases have passed for this particular problem so i hope that everyone was clear with this particular problem and if you have any doubts then you can mention them in the comments and please make sure to comment understood or plus one in the chat uh, in the comment section if you have understood this problem clearly and hit the like button as well thank you for watching and keep coding guys